I'm entering my next phase of planning. I've already done my brain dump. I've got everything I could possibly think of on my brain and into a checklist. Now I'm starting the process. I've gathered up most of that stuff and now I'm looking at it. A thing that came to mind, this process, even though it's, it's planning for a month long Arctic expedition, is not that different from what you would be doing for a weekend camping trip. There are definitely some items that I'm gonna bring and some considerations for a long-term stay. Really, the basics are the same. All right, so a little behind the scenes camera prep stuff. What a lot of people don't see is like, I think we've got 11 different cables, about three of that 11 different cables per variety, which is like 40 cables and tons of camera gear. So it's just kind of a cool to sometimes see everything that's getting loaded out behind the scenes of a big trip like this. See this thing? It's too small. Get out of here. We're going big. Whoops. Whoops. We're going big. What boots are you gonna take? Oh no. <laughs> this is what I've come down to on this. Everything involved with this trip is high risk. From the amount of gear that you can take in the offloading to the minimal amount of power, you can't get stuff, everything, everything's at this level of high risk. You just kind of live there. Finally whittled down all of my Greenland items to these bags. And I think I'm really good to go. They're all under 66 pounds, which is the Iceland Air's requirement. And I should be good to go. My flight will take me to Iceland first then to Greenland, where I'll hop on another small airplane before getting on a boat to meet the trucks in southern Greenland. The trip will take me three solid days just to get to the trucks. From this point on, the crew is on their own to get everything ready for Overland Expo. Jeff will lead the truck build, Nate will run the edits, Heather will organize the Overland Expo booth, and Rochelle will oversee the crew as a whole. The next time I see them will be in Utah, as the fleet is making its way to Arizona. To the crew, I wish you the best of luck. And Kurt, I'll see you soon in Greenland. Overlander is presented by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. And in part by Magpul, apparel and hard goods. Equipped. Worn. Go prepared. CBI off-road fabrication. Max Tracks. Take the easy way out. Icon Vehicle Dynamics. And the power of Red Arc. Right now you can see this truck pulling up behind me and in the trailer is our secret, our secret system that uh, we've been talking about a little bit. Super secrets about to reveal it to the world. We're pretty excited. I've been waiting for this gosh, coming up on six months now. So I'm Jack to get this stuff on the tundra and show it to the world. Here we go. Clay has been dreaming about this project for about three years and it's so exciting to see the beginning of this process. He is gonna be stoked when he gets back from Greenland. I just want to look at it. I know, I can't, I'm just like. I just want to. I can't stop. <laughs> I can't stop staring. So guess, when, uh, how do we put this awesome piece of equipment on the Tundra? On the Tundra. Well, thankfully, the lead engineer from Patriot, Jack, is flying yes. in tonight at 9.30, and yes. we're gonna hit the ground run tomorrow morning. First okay. thing, we're gonna be diving into an inventory, and then figuring out what we need to do to put this thing on the Tundra. This is gonna go on that. Patriot Campers was founded in Australia back in 2013. Since its inception, Patriot has been a major innovator in the overland and touring space. Their premium camper trailers have won Camper Trailer of the Year for five straight years. Patriot Campers are now available in the U.S. and we here at XO are very excited to be a part of their next chapter. The new PCOR Trayback system is their new line of adventure-based systems for vehicles. And this Tundra build is the very first one in the U.S expanding its functionality far beyond a typical bed system. Hey, good morning. How are you? How'd you sleep? 
Yeah. Uh, like a log. Yeah. Get a little rest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Feel Two days you. flying. I needed that sleep. Yeah, yeah. And it was so good to sleep in a bed, not in a chair with my bag like right. this. <laughs> good. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah. Gears we, here. Sweet. Here it is. I think it all made it. The boys were excited to meet Jack, so we brought them over to check out the build and shake his hand. What do you think of all this? Is it cool? Yeah. yeah. It's got all the electrical stuff disconnected, so there's a bunch of stuff underneath the bumper here that we uh, took apart, lights, sensors. So we're just taking the bolts out, the mounting bolts that mount the bed to the frame. Our gas cap is free, our filler is free, so pretty much there, we're ready to lift this thing off. All right, so we've got a, a couple of tie down points on the inside here. So instead of breaking our backs trying to lift it off or trying to get the hoist up here, we'll just chuck a, a couple of straps across, and then roll it forward, stick the hoist up here and lift it off. There we go. Yeah. By a fraction, eh? Woo! Okay. Get clear, keep going. <laughs> now what do we do with it? Right? <laughs> Can we just roll the rubber trailer straight under or what? <laughs> With the tub off, we now install the Warren Xeon 12S. This winch has a 12,000 pound capacity, aluminum drum structure to dissipate heat, and an 80 foot, 3 quarter inch Spidera Pro synthetic rope. Eli lends a hand to this process. He is a junior overlander at heart, no doubt. Got the wiring harness all laid out the way it's supposed to go. A few things plugged in, like our water pump, winches in, uh, and everything else is ready for the flatbed to go on. So first we're gonna put the headboard onto the flatbed and then put that entire unit onto the back of the truck. work of art. It's beautiful. I'm a huge fan of the flatbed myself. It's just so functional. So now we can put a canopy on it, use it for camp life and all that. And if we wanted to turn this into a workhorse, we could use, use just the flatbed. Yeah, it's really cool. How cool? <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> this has all happened with it in the matter of uh, a normal work day, which I'm really excited about. So we're going to go get some hardware to fasten this thing on and then uh, put on toolboxes, we'll put on the fenders. Uh, there's some trim pieces that go up front. And then after that, the actual canopy goes on. Overlanding comes in many different forms. So I decided to take on a project of my own. I made the decision a month ago to buy an old motorcycle. And so far it has smoked on me twice. The um, clutch has gone out once. I basically tried to run into another car. And now the fuel tank is leaking. And that fell out yesterday, halfway on my way to work. So luckily Jeff came and rescued me and saved the day. Now it's, uh, it's become a project bike. This is hopefully gonna be a new fuse box for the motorcycle. It was previously soldered for a different project, and it's been laying here in the shop for, I think, five years now. So I'm going to repurpose it. I have little to no experience working on motorcycles or cars or anything. So this is a whole new odyssey, especially wiring. Wiring is terrifying. This is what we needed to get off, which means we've already had one success this morning. It's pretty good. Nathan's hair dryer over there that you can hear. This is the alien heat gun that I've also never used before in my entire life. It's on. Can I just hold this for me quick? Just hold that? Thank you. I gotta do some important things over here. Did I get you? Power comes on, the lights, we're in business. 
We'll see if it starts or starts on fire. Okay, so my little battery is nuked. I don't know what happened to it. It's probably the fire that took it out. So we've got this backup battery here. <laughs> that is actually for a car. But for testing purposes, we'll see if the power comes on. Positive, negative, and that one. Oh, see that? Power. Well, I feel pretty good about that, not gonna lie. Next, it's onto the gas tank to see if why it's leaking gas all over everything. All right, Jack, we've made it to day two. We got a lot done yesterday. Really productive day yesterday. Yeah, good day. It was pretty impressive. Uh, so today it's mostly electrical and plumbing to start with. So at the moment, I'm just trying to figure out all of the canopy and tray wiring to the car. I've got like headboard power here for all our work lights, all that sort of stuff. I've got all the tail lights, indicators. I've got a water pump in here to figure out. I've got Anderson plug, like the mains power to the canopy. And then I'm trying to figure out all the central locking and then we've got like water tank level gauges and everything going on here. There's quite a bit, quite a bit in the corner, but not far off finishing it. I'm just sorting through the cables here that are gonna have a power source under the uh, hood. And I say sorting is a lightly used term because it's incredibly easy. This whole thing has been labeled already for me. So I'm just identifying what I want to go to the main battery, what I'm gonna send to our auxiliary battery, which will end up over there. This, this might be the easiest wiring job on our builds yet. Okay, so the bike is looking good. We wired in the new fuse box. Got a new battery put in here. One little fun thing is the Megapult DACA pouch conveniently has some extra tools and like wires and cables. Slides right in on top. And these things are waterproof too. So it actually kind of acts as a double feature. It's waterproof from rain, kind of protecting those cables a little bit. And hopefully keeps some of the dust out of there. So now I'm gonna go grab the tank, throw it on, and we'll see if it starts. There it is. Take it outside just in case it starts on fire. Off to a good start. Here we are, morning of day three. Got quite a bit done, didn't get as much as we'd hoped last night. But the canopy's but just, it's ready to go. It's on. right there, yeah. But that, that kind of turned out okay though, because our springs came in last night. Yeah. So we can throw those on. Get them in before we stick all the weight on the back. Yeah, exactly. Put the canopy on, put the rooftop tent on. So springs, canopy tent. That's our goal. Day three. Day three. And if we get that done, we'll carry on with a bit of wire. Yep. And day four is just wiring. Yeah. Finish it out. Sweet. Cool. All right, let's get these springs on there. With the new custom leaf springs installed, we lower the tundra to see the stance of the truck. Ooh, it's high. That is high. I reckon it's going to sit pretty good with the canopy on it, though. It should, like, it should be yeah. about right. So we're gonna try and get the canopy onto the truck, but we haven't got a forklift available, so we're coming up with some pretty elaborate ideas to get it on there. Um, we're kind of thinking, we'll, li we'll lift the frame with the hoist, like secure it onto that, and then we'll park the truck here. And then, I mean, how we got it into the frame was we just kind of slid it in with a few guys, so maybe we can just slide it out. It was a great plan. Damn. We're finally at the point where we get to put the rooftop tent onto the peak or canopy system. So we have that frame that the canopy came in. We're gonna utilize that, 
put the tent on top of it, lift up, lift up on the hoist, and try to slide it on top. Uh, first, we need to get, get our mounting brackets all situated, and then we'll see how it all goes. I think it's gonna piece together pretty easy, just like the rest of it has. We'll see what happens. So we got the tent on, right? um, spare tires mounted, canopies on, everything's bolted up, locked down. It's basically wiring left to go. It's like not too much. We did a little bit of wiring in there, put that fascia panel on, sort out all the tail lights and rear sensors and stuff. Other than that, good to go. All right, Jake. So this is our last step with you here. Yep. It's gone well so far. Let's see how this goes. Yeah. All we got to do is feed this under. A few times, yeah. So we got the winch line on. While we're at it, we figure we may as well put tension on the line uh, and stretch the line. So we're gonna take it outside and hook it to another vehicle, get the tension we need, wrap it once and be done with it. We use a second vehicle to tighten the winch line. The reason we do this is to prevent the line from binding on itself while spooled and to create a good purchase on the drum. How's it feel, Jeff, for wrapping this bad boy up? It feels great. Are you excited? I am. This feels really good. I mean, there's, of course, some odds and ends stuff to do. We won't have the truck on the road for a little while for other things, but getting this big section done is awesome. With the line spooled and the P-Core system complete, we take a step back and admire the truck. All right, Jack, here we are morning of day five, and we're done. Done in full. Yeah. As the lead engineer and designer of this product, how do you feel it went? I think it went really smooth. Um, you know, I had a fair bit of help doing it as well. Mm -hmm. but I mean, it really did go smooth. Yeah. Sweet. Well, what, why don't you show us what we got here? Give us a little walk around. Got on the body, you got toolboxes down the back. You got that big ARB compressor up in there. Mm -hmm. Up the front, you got a lot, there's a lot going on behind that panel there. You know, you got your water pumps, all that sort of stuff in there. Right. Headboard, we've got work lights. Okay. Down the back as well. Canopy, we've got whatever inverter you want to fit up in there. It's mm -hmm. totally up to you. Then you know you got your charge station up in here. That switch there, auxiliary. That's all your charging points. Okay. You got more over the other side as well. You got water tank level. Oh, nice. Um, you got all the radar gear going on in there. You got the BMS 1230. Uh huh. You got 160 amp hours of lithium. You got solar input. You know heaps of storage. <coughs> I mean everything. The drawer on the back. Mhm. Mm Everything's central locking. The canopy. All the side boxes, the rear drawer, all locks with the car. Rear winch. Yep. Uh, down the back here, we got water, pump switch. Nice. Very convenient. Spare tire, jerry cans. It's around this side. Another rear toolbox. Canopy this side. Got the upright fridge. 85 litres. Nice. More charging points. The drop down kitchen. So it gets smooth. down to a reasonable height. Yep. Do your gas cooker. Perfect. Sink and pantry. And storage, huh? That's really efficient. All at a reasonable height. Now this whole system is pressurized too, right? Or like it? Yeah. So we've got a nice filter at the front. Keeps it pressurized. Yep. Stops dust creeping in the seals and anything like that. Well, thank you so much for coming halfway around the world. To right. make this happen. You gotta go halfway back. Then. Yeah. <laughs> um, and hopefully we get to do more of this stuff with you guys. Thanks again. Appreciate Catch me it. for the next build as well. Sounds good. good. With Jack on his way home to Australia, we are left with the finishing touches on the Tundra. Now, our thoughts shift to Clay, Kurt, and the E7 Greenland Expedition.
Overlander is presented by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. In association with Patriot Campers.